Christians, can we just agree to disagree on some things? I mean, seriously, just think about the list of things that tend to divide us in the church. It really kind of hurts my brain to think about. There's politics, there's women in ministry, there's strategies, there's evangelism, there's discipleship, and the list really just kind of goes on and on and on and on. And it's gotten to the point that some Christians just, when they hit this tension, they're like, you know what, I'm just out. I mean, but who's to blame them? But I'm not letting you out that easy. Listen, when it comes to the letters that Paul wrote to the early church, one of his most repeated themes through all those letters is unity. So join me today and I will show you how to master the subtle art of agreeing to disagree on Church Door. Isn't it quite alarming that so many people are willing to throw away a relationship to the curb, all in the name of being right? Right. I mean, longtime friends or even family, it is truly a sad phenomenon. And for some reason, many Christians have wrongly thought the greatest spiritual discipline is theological correctness or just being right. Well, I don't know about you, but I can't think of any instance off the top of my head where Jesus looked at his disciples and said, right belief is the road to spiritual greatness. But Jesus, I thought you are our friend. Actually, Jesus fought against spiritual smugness. Like in Matthew 23, he said this about the Pharisees. On the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. In other words, on the outside, they appeared spiritually right or righteous and put together, yet on the inside, they were spiritually bankrupt, disconnected from God. And listen, I'm also pointing at myself here. And let's be honest, don't we just like to be right? So have you ever seen one of these coins? I believe one of our kids got one for Christmas recently and casually I asked them, do you know who is on this coin? Confidently I taught them it is Sacagawea. This caught my wife's ear. She said, what did you say? What did he say? Hey. Again, in confidence, I said Sacagawea. And for the next 10 minutes, Jody and I went back and forth on the true pronunciation of the name of this lady on the coin. And in a moment of frustration, knowing I was right, I whipped out my phone and I did what I should have done the first minute of the conversation. I Googled, pronounce Sacagawea. I was totally wrong. Sacagawea. Yet completely convinced I was right and willing to argue the point for over 10 minutes. Now this might be a, a silly example, but the truth is so many of us in doing this playfully, it is a serious, deeper reflection of a symptom that we might have, pride, and the need to be right. Because for many, when a serious moment approaches, a playful 10 minute conversation turns into a tooth and nail relationship ending fight. Too many times we are willing to trade rightness for relationship. It's a tragedy, a tragedy we should seek to prevent. So many people have been left in the wake of religious rightness, and we look at the example of Christ, this is not what he taught. Jesus taught humility, a willingness to sit and dine with those we don't agree with, and even some that we might call an enemy. Think of Judas, who was sitting at his table. Take it, eat. That's why I'm gonna to call today's message, How to Master the Subtle Art of Agreeing to Disagree. In Philippians chapter four, Paul is writing a letter to his friends in Philippi. Actually, some scholars believe that this is a letter and specifically in a category known as a letter of friendship. Here, let me help you. F is for friends who do stuff together. Therefore, this letter was structured to share advice and examples of things that Paul had learned that might benefit his close friends. In chapter four, he starts by saying this, therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. So if we want to master the subtle art of agreeing to disagree, we must first see your relationships as a labor of love. In this verse, we can see Paul's true, genuine love and care for his brothers and sisters in Christ. He calls them his joy, which in this letter, he uses that word over 16 times to describe his affection towards the Lord, his calling, and his fellow believer. Not only does Paul call them his joy, he calls them his 
crown. And this Greek word used is stephanos, meaning wreath of victory. This is in reference to that leafy crown that you've seen in so many classic Greek athletic pictures or statues. So think about all the Olympians who are training for the 2024 Olympics this summer. They do it as a labor of love. It's not always easy, certainly. There are days of challenge, burnout, tension, but they pursue it for the love of the game. So it should be our relationship in the church. We do it because we see it as a most worthy pursuit, a pursuit that brings us great joy, the blood, the sweat, the tears, they're all worth it. So as Paul starts by expressing his joy, he then goes into this in particular moment where there is some tension that existed between two of his dear friends. He continues by saying this, I entreat Udiah and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. So if you wanna master the subtle art of agreeing to disagree, we must also be of the same mind. The word that Paul uses to encourage these two women to agree to disagree is autophronian, translated to mean to have the same mind. Now this could be hard if you are disagreeing, right? It requires us laying down our individual mindsets. Well, it seems pretty un-American, huh? Well, it it kind of is. As brothers and sisters in Christ, to be part of the family of God, we're called to lay down our individual selves, to be together in one mind, the mind of Christ. We see this idea in many of Paul's other writings to be in Christ. What does that mean? Well, I think it means that we, we conform our wants, our ideals, our desires to the ways of Christ, which were humility, sacrificial, God honoring, being a servant leader. So maybe you've left the church because of a disagreement. Maybe now is the time to ask yourself, have I demonstrated the mind of Christ in that situation? And I know it really seems cliche, but WWJD. And if we were being honest, we would probably see there are real ways that we could put our pride to the side, put aside being right for the sake of relationship. If you find yourself here today, we have a team of people that want to pray for you. They wanna walk with you through this situation. You can reach us down in the comments or you can text prayer to the number that you see coming up on the screen right now. Hey, do me a quick favor. Help us promote great Christian content just like this by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so that every single time we put out a piece of content, it's gonna come directly to you. Or you can go the extra mile by going to rivervalleyrockford.org slash give and making a donation there. Every single donation made goes right back into helping people just like you take their next step with Jesus. Our prayer for you this week is that you may lay down your own rights and be in the same mind of Christ with your brothers and sisters. You might walk in the unity that he's created you to walk in. I hope this encouraged you. I've got one more video that I really think will encourage you today. Go ahead and hit that button right in the center of the screen.